boat uh, was sailed in the 2018 edition of the Golden Globe, the fourth finisher in the race, one of five that only the finished. So uh, it's quite a handsome, we say handsome yacht. Uh, in uh, English terms, you might say. So, uh, and Ian's up for it. So, um, I'm married. So, to Sally, uh, I have three growing up, grown up kids: uh, Thomas and Owen, who are 21, and Emma, who is uh, 16 now. Generally speaking, I'm one of these guys that works from home. Before COVID, I worked from home, or I was on an aeroplane flying somewhere else. Sally's very good in saying, "Okay, make it an option. Don't, don't, don't bother me with the ideas." And it's four years away, right? And you know, yeah, yeah, okay. Next week you'll be doing something else, right? So I think it, it develops reality over time. For me, the next action was to get hold of a boat. And I already liked Tradewind 35. I nearly bought one of these boats a year or so before, and it was out of my budget at the time. So I was familiar with it. I knew it wasn't the fastest boat, but I knew it was a really tough, robust boat. And, I, and Isfan had documented all his work. So this fan had come back at the end of the race. It was prize giving time, I think, if I remember rightly. Uh, I decided I was going to commit myself to the race. My idea at the time was to try and find a boat that was, had a lot of preparation already. That would save me time. Now, life doesn't always work out that way. For me, it was the right boat, right place, right time. And it got me up to my neck which is a good thing because it's very easy to step away and, 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 and not follow through on what you say, right? And the boat was still almost exactly like he'd crossed the line. So, you know, he'd taken his laundry off, but nothing else. It was quite interesting because that was an insight because you looked at the boat, you went, ah, okay, this has had a hard time. You know, his fan did an amazing job to bring that home, the boat home. Everything was destroyed electronically on the boat. His fan managed with very limited communication. So, um, the people that had followed the last race, Isfan was one of the guys that had, you know, very little support. He, he really sailed in the conditions he got. Mm -hmm. His radio was stuck on one frequency. Although he had a history of knowing ham, ham network, radio nets and so on, I don't think he got a lot of help at all. Yeah, well, we shook hands in the cockpit there and then, and that got me committed. So I, I'm, I'm very lucky because I've got a really strong family base, super strong foundation. Right. And it allowed me the space to work out if this was going to be the right thing. So they went from, uh-huh, to, okay, this seems to be happening. And they've been supportive. Uh, and it's only in the last few months it's got real, Eli. It's been quite emotional just recently, stepping away. To leave, to come here, what felt like a real departure. Um, and, you know, my Emma and Tom are both finishing... Uh, a stage of their education and Tom's had his results and it was excellent and you think uh, wow tick and uh, Emma she's got uh, like 12 days to go <laughs> she gets her results but she'll be fine uh, but that strangely not that I can affect that in any way at all really that will make me feel a little bit better if that's gone well for them as I depart and for Sally right um, but other than that, you know, I don't, I don't need tapes of messages. I don't need books of photographs. I know who my I family are, you know, I'm really... They're there anyhow. Yeah, yeah, I guess so, yeah. So that's, I've never really needed that. So uh, communication-wise, I know that, um, for instance, uh, Abilash has been communicating via, via Jeff with other ships. Yeah. Have you set anything up for SSB or VHF or communication style? Or I have not, right? And that's a new world to me. Uh, and I'm going to have to try and learn it as I go, quite frankly. I want to talk to the other competitors, definitely. Yes. I don't see why not. I think the, the film, they call them the film drops, the, the yes. gates, are going to be quite hard things. Hard from a sailing perspective, but hard yeah. emotionally as well. For me, I want to go and get on with the job. Enjoy the journey, because it's about the journey, not not the destination per se. And I really don't think it'd be great for me if I was coming in and seeing family waving from the rib. I think that would be bl bloody awful, to be <laughs> honest. I can't think of anything worse. Uh, and I, I'm, I, if you talk to Sally, I guess she'd, I'm, I'm sure she'd say the same. She'd rather not do that. As you would expect, after a boat's done 30,000 miles, it needs its steering dropping and, and looking yeah. at and so on. And you know, fun it, fundamentally, it was still in pretty good condition. Really, there was a couple of little issues that Isvan had had, now we're easily, easily resolved. Well, I moved to a different system, uh, one is called a hydrovane. 
So for those who like the detail, the hydrovane has an independent rudder. Um, not, every, not everybody likes that idea, but it, what it means to me is the steering gets doesn't get 30,000 miles of, of, of wear and tear. Yeah. Qualifier was um, pretty straightforward. I had a bit of an easy run, too much of an easy run, possibly. But I guess what it did do was leave me alone on the boat for, you know, whatever, 20 odd days for the first time. And, and my story is I'm not a solo sailor, right? I'm doing this. I don't know I can do this. Some people are going to do this race. They've done it before. They know they can do it. They still have to get lucky and do all the right things. For me, it's an adventure, right? So, and I'd never been alone, sailed alone. So I'm teaching myself to be a solo sailor, teaching myself to be a navigator, teaching myself all these things. Uh, and it helped tick those boxes. So I came back pretty comfortable, really. We put the new rig on the boat. We kept the stay on the, on the bowsprit. We added a solent stay uh, to the boat, which is something you could do within the rules because this boat used to have those options. So that gave me like a second gear to the boat. So I've got the big sail on the outside and I've got a working jib. And then when we came back from the qualifier, the stay sail is so important to this boat. I think it's so, it's so useful on this particular boat. Um, I decided to put a furling system on it. So rather than going up and hanking on sails and deciding, do I really want to do that for the fifth time today? <laughs> I now pull a string and that makes that much more dynamic. So I put in the Solent stay on the boat. It's freed up the the outer, the Genoa stay, is going to allow me to put a much bigger, lighter weight Genoa for light air, because this is a heavy boat and needs to be kept moving. Uh, and then step back to a much smaller, stronger, high cut sail when the weather gets up. I'm carrying something called a Jordan Series Drove um, as an option for heavy weather. On this boat, I'll have a Storm Jib, which everybody will have. I've also got a tri sail. Uh, we've done a new trial sail, tri sail track system and things, which is going to make that much easier for me to rig if I choose to rig it. So I have that as an option. And then the drogue is kind of, you know, the last, almost the last ditch, but I've got two very strong points where I can trail a warp from or something else at the back of the boat, keeping it clear of my gear. Uh, and I'm carrying this big drogue. Um, so it's something in the armory, to be honest. I don't. I'll have to tell you when I come back whether it's something I've, I've really deployed in anger. It's like some half the world loves these things and half the world thinks it's, 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 it's not, not for them. So that's it really, it's pretty simple. So tri -sail, or I will carry a tri -sail. Isfan before me used his tri -sail a lot on this boat and I think quite successfully. So I'd like to have that option. Um, I don't have a fourth reef for example, I've got a kind of standard three reef system but I've got a very small third reef so we recut the sails. Um, to be a little bit more forgiving. How will you keep your mind sane? My smart answer is I'm such an inefficient sailor. Eli, don't, I'm busy all the time. <laughs> it takes me all day just to sail the boat, right? I don't have a lot of off time. And if I'm off, I'm asleep. Um, I'm going to take a fair number of books. I'm looking forward to having the time to read again. So I'm not, strangely, I'm not particularly worried. And I may regret this. I'm not particularly worried about taking loads of music or that type of stuff. I love, I love podcasts, I love audio books. I love all sorts of stuff in my normal life, but this is different. So I, I, I haven't tried to carry my home, my day life with me on this book journey. Um, and I've actually bought a lot of um, say, uh, what's the right term, non-fiction as well, sailing material. Believe it or not, boring as it might be, sailing around the world and reading about sailing. It kind of gives me that chance to really immerse myself. So I am, you know, I want to sit down and study my pilot books and my sailing directions and, you know, my list of radio <laughs> signals. Because when else do I get to do that? Day life doesn't, normal life doesn't allow that. So there's a bit of me that thinks actually, yeah, get into that. Three months from now, I might be pulling my hair out. <laughs> but that's kind of where I am right now. Yeah. Uh, will you um, take some seeds with you to, like Bill King did, to make some sprouts. We had this idea and I laughed at it initially. So, but in, in my kit here, buried in here, I've got uh, uh, mung beans, I think, um, alfalfa, jade, what else have I got? got green, green sprouts of growing, growing stuff. Exactly. And I'm um, gonna try and grow them. We've experimented at home and it's really good. Fantastic, uh, mustard and so on. And food-wise, Sally's prepared my food. Um, in terms of organizing it. And it was a bit like a military mission. So 
I've I've broken my my food plan into literally into days, and I have day bags. How many ca calories did you do for one day? So I, we did have somebody look at it. One of um, I have a sponsor for freeze dried food uh, called Nutrient Survival, and they they took a look at it. And it looks like it's about three thousand ish, something like that, uh, which I think is kind of more than enough to be quite frank. Um, but I've got options to like add really easily, and actually it's partly where I use the freeze dried food. So you know, so I, I, I built like two hundred and sixty generous days into the boat. And then I've probably got 40 or 50 days of what I might call emergency food. So I've got, if I'm feeling like I'm not getting enough, I can easily upgrade. And I think it's been generous, to be honest, already. Uh, so I'm, yeah, I'm not going hungry. I, uh, some people are going to strip that back. But I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not going out there to suffer on that base. There's plenty of suffering to be happening already <laughs> without not being able to have a half decent meal, you know. Uh, How deep are you in financially? Do you know what? The honest truth is I don't have a proper number for it, but I would guess that as an entire project, remembering I'm going to go away for a year and so on as well, uh, I think you have to think about 250,000 euros. Um, but you have a, you, hopefully you have your vessel, your boat, that's got a chunk of that value. So yeah, I haven't got the spreadsheet chose not to do that but I reckon you'd be if you're honest with yourself you'd be approaching something like that quite easily or if you were short of that it's because you didn't do something else that you probably would have liked to have done for me being away costs money <laughs> while I'm here costs me money um, so I kind of factor that into it as well yeah you can compare it in lots of different ways you can compare it we, last night we were talking about minis mini mini transats and you know crikey how expensive uh, a year one year campaign of those is but also if you walk down to any marina and you see a modern boat from let's say one of the big french production companies let's say not to pick on them but anyway german boat building doesn't matter of 35 36 feet and you go to the boat show and you want to buy one of those things brand new you're into this kind of money what i've got here is a dakar rally version of of that and i feel like the value is much greater in what I've got here. This is this really is an adventure boat that quite literally can go almost anywhere in the world with the right right crew. So it doesn't seem like crazy crazy uh, bad value to me. Uh, and of course, that includes all the uh, equipping of the boat from from medical kits to you know there's four epurbs on this boat. <laughs> you know, so we are heavily equipped because the race requires that and to, and to pr pr provide that cover. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.